Judge. Um, happy Sabbath. Can, can you hear me? Good. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Louder. All right. Let me see if I can get it twisted this way. Okay. All right. Once again, happy Sabbath. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. I was thinking this morning that this is as as important and as top of the list that this is. It's still very difficult for me. And it's still, I get nervous and excited when I have to do this. It's so important to me. And um, God is so good. He still allows me. And I'd just like to thank him for allowing me another opportunity to come up here and speak um, on his behalf um, to his people. And I'd like to thank the pastor as well and his family. Um, I want to continue to pray for his wife and that family and the board and all of you for being here. And I just pray that we can listen with the ears that God gave us, that we can hear what he has to say to his church today. And I thank you all for being here. I pray that um, this, this message, which has been on my mind for the last couple of years, it's um, when I was asked to do this, I didn't really have a topic. And this time was a little different than previous times. Sometimes I got the topic already and I um, kind of knew where I'm going. This one, I didn't really know. I didn't um, have a topic right away. I didn't have a, a the layout or anything right away. I just knew this had to be addressed. And um, I just was gave, gave myself to God to allow him to just lead me the way he would have me to go in this matter. And, and like here I am today, I pray that you um, just get the message that God wants you to get, not, not because I'm, me or because my feelings or anything, just get the message the way God um, would have you get it, um, each one of us. So the topic is growth. It's always been a very touching topic for me. I think one of the things that we, we thrive on in the Adventist church is growth. Not at all times are we thriving on it, in my opinion, according to God's view. And we will, we will discuss that um, even further. But today we're going to look at growth and we're going to try to look at it from the perspective of God. Not us, not scholars, not theologians, not the world, not the professors, but we're going to try to look at growth from the perspective of God today. So let us pray. Father in heaven, we once again, we thank you. We praise your holy name because we know you have a word for us. We just need to have the ears unblocked, the hearts to, to soften, to hear, and to accept. And we pray that you speak because your servants are listening. Put your hand on my mouth and put your words inside of me that they will hear you and hide me behind the cross because they don't need to hear me. We thank you for these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we go to the to the um, text, the scripture reading. It's a very interesting text. We know it very well. Matthew 13. 13, 3 to 8. And I don't have my reader today. She's, she's, she's off today. And it says, And he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And then he said, Some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith, they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they were withered away. And some fell among thorns, 
and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and bore forth fruit, some and hundred fruit, and some sixty, and some thirty. Normally, when I would use these texts, especially this particular one, I would focus on the soil, the ground. But today, we're going to focus on the seed. Now, the seed, inside of the seed, God has already developed a system where it grows. It will grow. And as you saw, no matter where it fell, it still grew. And that is the, the, the kind of where we need to remember that God did not create the seed in a void. It, it had the ability, he gave the ability to grow wherever it fell. Now, how it grows is according to where it falls. So with us, God created us the same way. God created us all with the ability to grow. And some of us might choose to grow in intellect or in a job pursuit or in whatever other direction. You can choose the direction you need to, you want to grow. But God created Adam and Eve in his image, in his likeness, for them to grow like him. And that's the responsibility of all of us here. We can't leave that responsibility to the world because the world's going to have you to grow, to grow the way the world grows. The world's going to make you think that it's money that you need, it's housing, it's prestige, it's, it's being the, the head of the, the pack in the packing order. The world will lead you to believe that this is what you, this world is what you need to be on top of. It's what you need to be ahead of. But God has got a different approach to the growth of his children. And we would, we would be well, um, the, the, the example we need from the seed is that you're going to grow anyway. You're going to grow. You're, 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 it's in aiding us to be, to want to advance and to, to discover new things and to, to, to grow. But it's incumbent on us as Christians to grow as God will have us to grow. So, so we read this. From Steps to Christ. As with life, so it is with growth. It is, it is God who brings the bud to bloom and the flower to fruit. It is by his power that the seed develops. First the blade, then the air, after that the full corn in the air. Mark 4, 28. And the prophet Isaiah said of Israel that he shall grow as the lily. They shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. So we see here even that the prophet Hosea is likening the growth of a, of a Christian to the growth that it, it's coming from the, the lily and the, and the corn and the, on, on the vine. This is imperative that we understand that our, our, our growth depends on us. God has already imp implemented in us by the, the means by which we will grow, but we need to use these directives. Because of its simplicity, the parable of the sower has not been valued as it should be. From the natural seed cast in the soil, the God Christ desires to lead our minds to the gospel seed, the saying of which results in bringing man back to his loyalty to God. So we recognize that the seed, the seed in the parable is the word, is the direction from God to where us, we need to go. And not using it 
puts us in peril of growing in the wrong way. So as Brother Victor said, trusting in God and learning from him and following his directives will always get us to grow in his, in his way. He will, the change of heart by which we become children of God is in the Bible spoken of as birth. Again, it is compared to the germination of the good seed sown by the husbandman. In like manner, those who are just converted to Christ are as newborn babes to grow up to the stature of men and women in Christ. First Peter. Or like the good seed sown in the field, they are to grow up and bring forth fruit. Now I mentioned growth and the, the reason behind it is that we have periods. When you're a baby, you, 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 you get the milk. You get mama's milk and formula and all these things to help you to mature. Now, the, 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 the thing we need to realize is that in that milk, in that process, the baby's getting all the nutrition that they need. They don't have to work. It's just swallow, suck and swallow. That's, that's the process. It's a very easy process for the baby. They don't have teeth yet. But when you get to a developed stage, you don't want to be running around for baby bottle. You want no meat. Therefore, you have to learn the process of eating no solid food, meat. You have to cut it up. You have to chew it up. It's a process that you have to put more effort in. It's not an easy process like milk. What happens to us that I, I see that bothers me is that we, we, we tend to stick on the milk of, of, of Christianity, the milk part. And we don't want to dive in deep and start getting our teeth into the meat of the matter. The meat of the matter is if we're not growing in Christ, then we're not doing what God said. We're not doing as God would have us to do. We're not. And the, the process in which that happens is, is, is being stated already. It says the word is the seed that we need inside of us to help us to grow in Christ. Because the world has so many other ways to do this and that and the other, and they will tell you the things that's so important, we are distracted. We have a, a deceiver who is a great illusionist and a great confusionist and a great deceiver. So he uses all these methods, especially in the schools and the education system and and all the, the business types of, of, of methods, they're all designed by the world standards. So what happens to us? We get consumed with all these methods. So what, what, we, what I noticed that what happens to us is not that we, most of the time we don't do it deliberately, but we're so in, indulged with, in, in, we're, we're, we're overrun by it, that it becomes part of who we are. I was thinking about this and I remember when I was younger um, and you did work like construction or anything like that, everything you done by hand, you know. Back in the days, even if, if you read your Bible, when they dug a well or something, they did that by hand, you know. You know, they, they dug it by hand, a pickaxe and a shovel. And that's how I kind of grew up. But in the invention of things that make life easier, like machinery and, and mixers and all these things has a way of taking away the simplicity of life. And we start depending on those types of things and that creeps into our way. We become lazy. And laziness doesn't just stay with you don't feel like going and cutting your grass. 
it has a tendency to grow. And we find ourselves as Christians wanting to be fed milk because we don't want to get into the meat of the matter. We don't want to chew. We don't want to cut it up. We just want somebody to put the bottle here and us to suck and swallow. We look at not just, I'm not talking to anybody here in particular, but Christianity, period. I was looking at a, I started to look at a YouTuber. He got my attention by saying that the Roman Catholic Church started Christianity. And that kind of threw me off, right? So I had to go and, and, and look at a bit of that. And, and he had many points that were very valid where the Roman Catholic Church took over and done these, these things. So my conclusion of the matter was, while he, was, he wasn't completely right, but he had a point. Because if you look at Christianity today, on a broad scale, on a, with an open mind, it looks more and more like something that it shouldn't. It looks less and less like Christ. I can show you a picture today, and I learned, of a prayer service in an Adventist church and a prayer service in a Pentecostal church. And you won't be able to tell the difference. As a matter of fact, you might think the Adventist church was a Pentecostal church, and you might think the opposite. And when we see these types of things, we're not so moved by them because we've been flooded with deception and illusions and confusion. We've been flooded. And so when we, when we look for the right path, you might pick, take a path that's better. Say, oh, I'm not going that far. I'm going to take a better path than that. But that don't necessarily mean you're on the right path either. That could be just another illusion or, or confusion or diversion. So what happens to us? We live in a society, the world, as Lot did. Remember Lot. Lot lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. And the word says that it vets his righteous soul. Remember that? And I'll tell you, Lot had to be pulled out of there. He didn't leave on his end. Lot got to the point that he was going to give his own daughter away to some wild street people. Because Lot was living and was starting to, he was being infiltrated and not even, he didn't even realize it. And what happened to him? He finally got out of there, but he lost his wife. Didn't he lose his wife? Why? She looked back in her. She couldn't let go. You know, that's Lot. Lot should have took his wife and children out of there a long, long time ago. But I'm just showing the influence that we're under. We're under our influence now in this world today. That's going to be the last influence. It's powerful. It's leading us way away from the road we should be on. It's letting us grow into worldly people, into the world, into the Christianity that guy I was telling you about on YouTube was explaining. That we jump around, we think we're, we're, we're saved. We think that... These things is what's pleasing God. And at times we don't even realize that we're not even trying to please God, but please not ourselves. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not connected. We're not connected to the source that's going to make the babes to grow. We're not. And we feel that we're okay because we're in a crowd. And, 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 and the, the, everybody's going in that same direction almost. 
So it gives you comfort to know that we're all going on this, this train that Alan White described it as. Everybody's on the train smiling and going at a thousand miles in the wrong direction. Because we have taken our eyes off the one thing that could keep us on track. The one thing that could help us to grow like Jesus grew. It's the word. We spend too much time looking for answers other places. And every bit of info, every bit of information you get, every thing you see and absorb and, and, and are on, it affects us. <laughs> Isn't it? We're not immune to it. We're growing. If you put a, 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 a you've seen a tree grow out of a building, that tree don't really want to grow out of a building, but it, that's really seed landed. So it's going to grow. It's going to grow sideways. <laughs> And that's what happens to us. Sometimes we're just, instead of, and that seed doesn't have a choice. He has to grow where, where it sends it. What we do, we can spend more time in the Word. Spend more time not listening, but studying. Because if you come across this that particular YouTube, he had a lot of good points, and then he's, he's trying to make, make the point that the, the, the Roman Catholic Church started Christianity, you know? No, we know they didn't, right? Because the one thing that gives that no validation is that they don't look like Jesus. No, nowhere. And a Christian, you know, so when, when, when we're growing in this world and then we are trying to make heaven, that's what, we're, that's what we're here for. We're here to please God, as Brother Victor said, trust God in every detail, every step of life's journey. We're here to finally hear those words, well done. That's why we're all here. We're not here to fit in and to look right and to, and to, to be uh, seen of people that were, were this or that, or even each other. We've got to grow more and more like Christ. And could you put up um, Galatians 5.22 for me, please? Am I overjumped? Oh, and we're just going to let Victor put up. This is, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. The meekness, temperance, against us there is no law. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Victor. Now you saw that. That is what we're supposed to be growing like. Just what that said. Put it back up, please, Victor. 22 and 23. Love. Joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. That is the way we should be growing. Irregardless of if you have a million dollars or you have five dollars or five parts. Irregardless if you have 10 suits or one suit. Irregardless of where you work or how many children you have or don't have, if you're married or not, all that doesn't matter. What matters is that you grow like that. That's what matters to God. God's not going to be calling you because you, you saved all this money, you gave all this money away. He's going to call you because you grew like that. You have children, most of you have children, and most of the children, you want them to grow like what? You want them to grow like you. And you want to put the, your, the best you. <laughs> you want to put the right information. You, you, you want to give them the right instructions and directions so they can grow into beautiful adults 
Is that not correct? But if if a human wants that for their children, what do you think God wants for his children? He wants his children to grow like him every day. Do you know that if all said and done, then when it's all over, when we finally get a, get that that well done, you're gonna be living forever. Do you realize that? You're gonna be living forever. And in that time, you're gonna be growing. Do you realize that? God created us to grow. He's very disappointed if we're still 10 years later, still drinking milk. We need to put down the surface stuff. We need to make disciples, but firstly, we need to be made disciples. We need to be able to give an account of what we believe and why we believe and where it's found. We need to. That's our, that's our growth. And that's what we should be investing our time and effort in. If not, we're going to grow, but we're not going to necessarily grow the way what we're having. The plant, the child grows by receiving from its surrounding that which ministers to its life, air, sunshine, and food. What these gifts are of nature are to the animals and plants, such is Christ to those who trust in him. He is their everlasting light, a sun and a shield. He shall be as the dew unto Israel. He shall come down like rain upon the moon grass. He is the living water, the bread of God, which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the word. We spend a lot of time doing a lot of things. And we know in Matthew 7 that it says, Lord, Lord, I've done all these wonderful things. We know that scripture. We've read it many times. We've seen it many times. But to recognize that that could be us is something that we don't always take into consideration. That we can be doing a lot of things, man, and a lot of things that might be good. But it's not what the only thing that God wants from us. God wants that character of Christ to grow inside of all of us. That's what he wants from us. He wants us to be able to stand on our own. Stand on our own. And Daniel. And say, the three Hebrews, they, even if he doesn't say me, I, I, this is what he wants. He wants us to grow in him. So when he looks, he ain't got to look hard to see his children. He could just look and see. He wants us to be not only saved, but prepared to be saved. He wants us to be equipped to be saved. You can't go to heaven and have the mindset of the world. You can't. Because you, the first thing, you ain't going to make it. But if you could, some way or the other, you're going to be one miserable person in heaven. Because heaven does not operate like that. So that character transformation, that new birth that we saw earlier, that baby needs to grow. It can't stay a baby. Right? You have, you have the, a baby. It don't stay a baby. It grows. But you could turn it into a criminal. Or you could turn it into, or you could help guide it toward sainthood. You can encourage it to be a criminal. You could tr mistreat it, or you could treat it with love and care. The foundation, what that we often hear, and we might hear it maybe a little bit as we get old enough, that we might misunderstand what it really means. God is love. So that's the foundation of the gospel. That's the foundation. That's what God is. God is love. Love is the foundation on which you build from. So we recognize that and we say that is, is over there. But God really wants us to become part of the foundation. 
Christ in us. That makes what we're part of. God in Christ. You're part of that foundation now. So you're not just relying on a, on a foundation of love. You're part of the foundation of love. God sees that for the real. You can't trick God. God sees whether you're part of that foundation of love or you're just talking about it or reading about it or quoting it or dressing up. Could you put Matthew 21, 18 to 20 up for me, please? Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the bay, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. We all, another one. We all knew that, that parable. Well, that actually happened. Not in a parable. And why? When you're a young Christian on milk, you say, well, why, why would Jesus do such a thing? Curse that poor tree like that. But you know, as you get to eat the meat of the matter, you realize that that tree lied. That tree lied. That tree which is only supposed to have leaves and all that when it's producing, didn't produce. Do you know why Jesus created the fig tree? To produce, huh? to produce figs, correct? So if you go to a fig tree, you're the creator and it doesn't produce no figs, what, what happens? It's not no good to the body. It looks good, though. Leaves flapping and shining in the breeze. You ever heard of the term from, from Ezekiel? Dead man's birds? Look at it. That tree, sorry, that tree was doing something that it wasn't supposed to do. It was deceiving the people. Are we doing that? Are we dressed nice? Everybody's dressed nice. Are we looking shiny and waving in the breeze and looking the part, but producing no fruit? You see what happened to the fig tree? Jesus is giving these examples, some of them so plain and simple, that we have to produce fruit. We can't just look the part. We can't just act the part. We can't just make believe because it's fruit or nothing. Where there is life, there will be growth and fruit bearing. But unless we grow in grace, our spirituality will be dwarfed, sickly, fruitless. It is only by growing, by bearing fruit, that we can fulfill God's purpose for us. Herein is my Father glorified, Christ said, that ye bear much fruit. It's in there. You know, I might struggle up her, but it's in there. Take what's in there and utilize it, because we need that. We need to remember that, as Victor said earlier, and we'll keep using it because it was wonderful, every day, every moment, since you wake up, then am I going to bear much fruit today? Because if I don't bear fruit, I'm going to be like the feed tree that doesn't bear figs. God created us in his image to grow like him, to represent him. When that failed, he decided to take Abraham. Then he decided to take the Jewish nation. He wanted somebody to grow like him, to show the world him. 
finally had to send Jesus. Jesus grew and should the world go it. Said, have you not seen me all this time? And he was asked, can we see God? That's the same responsibility we all have. We all have that responsibility to show God to the world. Not to be smarter than anybody. Not to be able to argue the best argument. I And I'm still this story many times. I used to work with a, a, a guy, a good friend of mine now, but not at the time, could argue blue Today and next week, and you're arguing red, and next week argue red. Yeah, with just as much vigor and just as much convincingness and all. So that's not what we're here for. We're not here for winning all these types of battles and engaging in them even. We're here to bear fruit. The fruit we saw in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. We need to remember we're on a course. We're on a course. The course is leading us where God will have us to go. It's not only traveling and moving, but it's growth. Each step, I don't know if you ever, you know, most of you probably heard of the book, The Pilgrim's Progress. And the, the main character in The Pilgrim's Progress was, was the character Christian. He was the one who was making the journey. And he made this wonderful journey. And he finally got to where he was going up to the cross. And all the whole part of that journey before, he was carrying a burden, the burden of sin. Carrying it. Couldn't get rid of it. And, and the, one of the characters was the evangelist, told him where to go. Then the guy that we all are bedazzled by, Got him off track. And, um, he, he was one of the main characters, Mr. Worldly Wise Man, right? Gave him a different rule. It was easier to go this way. It'd be, be, you could still get the same thing done, but you go over it be easier, whatever. But anyway, this is, was his mission, was to get this burden of sin off his back so he could be saved. And he got to the hill. At the top of the hill was the cross. And as he got up there and got close, the burden fell off. Huh? The burden of sin. God, and I say this often, God wants to save us from sin. From it. His mighty provisions. Jesus is our example. We need to get the victory over sin. If not, sin will get the victory over us. That's what's going to happen. So growth is important for each one of us as our children are important in their development. God is looking for us to develop, to be able to not only teach the milk part, but to teach the meat, to learn to, 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 to feed off the meat ourselves. Dig deep, deep in the Word. You could read some of these things like like I said, when we when we use the the um the the opening text, most of the time we're concentrating on the soil and where the seed fell, not realizing that this inside the seed itself, it was it was designed to grow, it was designed that way. You know, it just needed the the other things to be in place for it to happen, but it was designed to grow, and we are the same. We have to remember, in this journey, you're going to get all these distractions and all these things that look good and things that pleases the flesh. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You're going to get it. You've got to look past that and keep your eye on Jesus. A pure and noble character with all its grand possibilities has been provided for every human being. You heard that? But there are many who have not an earnest longing for such a character. They are not willing to part with the evil that they may have the good. They neglect to grasp the blessings that will place them in 
harmony with God, they cannot rule. Some of these, these writings, it, it's pretty hard, but it's pretty plain. It's pretty plain to see that we need to remember that if this is written and we believe that it's inspired by God, then we have to listen to what it's saying. And it's saying a pure, noble character with all its grand possibilities has been provided for everybody, you know. The word is already there. It's like walking in this world as a jungle. And it's got paths leading, and we have a path, a straight path. It's already there. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to clear anything. Just follow the path. It's going to have its different, at points, people's, people's um, circumstances are going to be different. But the path's the same. And this is what this is saying. We have this path already. And we need to follow it. Could you give me the, the, the green slides, please? Okay, this is, I'm, I'm finishing up, because I don't want to keep it too long. This is the closing of the matter. Am I right? At that time, shall Michael stand up, the great prince will stand up for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, the, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book of life. Then the third angel's message closes. Mercy no longer pleads for the guilty inhabitants of earth. The people of God have accomplished their work. They have received the latter rain, the refreshing from the presence of God, and they are prepared for the trying all before them. Angels are hastening to and fro in heaven, an angel returning from heaven from the earth announces that his work is done. The final test has been brought upon the world and all who have proved themselves loyal to the divine precepts have received the seal of the living God. Then Jesus ceases his intercession in the sanctuary above. He lifts his hands and with a loud voice says, it is done. And all the angelic hosts lay off their crowns as they make the solemn announcement as he makes the solemn announcement, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Every case has been decided for life or death. Christ has made the atonement for his people and blotted out their sins. The number of his subjects is made up the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven is about to be given to the heirs of salvation. And Jesus is to reign as king of kings and lord of lords. When he leaves the sanctuary, darkness covers the inhabitants of the earth. In that fearful time, the righteous must live in the sight of a holy God without an intercessor. Nearest up, let me go back. I, I wanted to use this as the closing because this is us. This is the great controversy. This is the book we give out, books that's on the back. This is us. When he leaves the sanctuary, darkness is going to fall on the earth or more darkness. In that fearful time, now, if we're still fumbling around with sin, you got to live in the sight of a holy God without an intercessor. You can't ask for forgiveness no more. You can't plead the blood, as they say. You can. It's no more intercessor. It's no more priest. So what this tells us, this tells us that we have to get the victory now. We have to live now like the end has already come. Because that's how you grow. That's how you form a character. By doing something over and over and constantly, you develop character. We get involved in the worldly stuff because that's something that we do. And before we know it, we're, 
Fool Lutz trying to give away his daughter. You know, fool wife turning back. She wants to go back. You know, that's what happens to us. So whatever is occupying us, whatever has got our attention, whatever we're giving our attention to develops our character. That's what happens. And, and, <laughs> He that is unjust is going to still be unjust. He that is filthy is still going to be filthy. And he that is righteous is going to stay righteous. And he that is holy is going to stay holy. You know how you how that works? Once you make that determination to be un, the unjust and, and filthy, you naturally bend that way anyway. You you don't you 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 tend to 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 do that, but to tend to righteousness and holiness, we need God's help. We need Jesus to inspire us. We need to stay focused. We need to do our part, but we need that encouragement and that strength that only God can give us. That's what we need. If not, we're not going to make it. We don't want to be, we don't want to be here thinking that we are. And this is this is my last one. Nearest the throne are those who were once zealous in the cause of Satan, but who were, who plucked as brands from the burning have followed their savior with deep, intense devotion. Next are those who perfected Christian characters in the midst of falsehood and infidelity. Those who have honored the law of God when the Christian world declared it void and the millions of, and the millions of all ages who were martyred for the faith. You see that part? The next are those who perfected Christian characters in the midst of falsehood and infidelity. Those who, who honored the law of God when the Christian world declared it were void. So when that guy was saying that the Catholic, women Catholic Church created Christianity, they created that Christianity. Not because of any worse than any other person, but because the influence is the enemy. The influence is the enemy. That's one. And beyond... It's the great multitude which no man could number of all nations, kindreds, and people, and tongues. Before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Their warfare is ended, their victory won. They have run the race and reached the prize. The branch, the palm branches in their hands is a symbol of their triumph. The white robes are the emblem of the spotless character of Christ, Christ which now is theirs. Amen. Growth is vital. It's vital to us to not just make it, but to help others to make it. If people could see Christ in us, that's going to help them to be drawn to him. Our families, our working colleagues, our neighbors, all those people we come in contact with are affected. Whether we're a feed tree with leaves or a fig tree with figs. Let us pray. Father, once again, we thank you and we pray that I didn't do anything. I didn't mess up this presentation, Lord. I pray you can take these words and these texts and take our hearts and let them be consecrated, O God, to thee. Help us all, Lord, to make the right decision and to grow in Christ and in righteousness is our prayer in, the, in Jesus' name. Amen. Closing so open. Amen. Let us pray. Father, once again, we are grateful. We are thankful that you have laid the path for each one of us, that you have made it possible for us to be holy, for us to be loving, to us, for us to be like Jesus. And we pray that we accept that 
responsibility today that we will strive with all our might to stay on the course that you have laid before all of us. Help us to keep our eyes on you and not on the world and not on the deceptions and the illusions that are prevalent today. We pray with thanks for this church. And once again, we thank you that you have brought us all together on this wonderful Sabbath day. Please, once again, forgive us where we have sinned collectively and forgive us individually where we have sinned against you. And we pray, Lord, that that day when you come, our names will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life and we can go home with you and grow more and more like you into eternity. It's our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.